freaking ridiculous. Wait, hold on a second. 13.9 terabytes. This QX extra large SSD has a whopping 15.3 terabytes of capacity. That's right, my friends over 15 terabytes on a single SSD. This thing probably has more storage in it than your entire household. What would you even do with this? Get off. This much solid state storage. And how much would you pay for it? I, I legit wanna know. Can you guys leave a comment below? What, what would you do with this? How much would you pay? As for what we would do with it, well, I've got some ideas. Ideas like, telling you about our sponsor, Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet wants to redefine the wallet with its compact frame and RFID blocking plates. Check out how they can keep your wallet bulged down and use offer code Linus to save 10% and get free worldwide shipping. Unlike the 100 terabyte Exa drive from Nimbus Data that we checked out recently, this drive from Team Group fits in a standard two and a half inch bay, hasn't been mercilessly disassembled yet, and is aimed at consumers to put in a normal gaming rig, like the one behind me right there. Crazy, right? <laughs> it's crazy to think about, like on these two two and a half inch drive sleds, but boom. 30 terabytes of solid state storage. You know, there was a trend in SSDs where at first they were made of like really thick housing so they'd feel like quality. And then over time, you know, the PC industry, they cheaped out and cheaped out until they were basically made of aluminum foil and the internals, but this one's heavy. You notice that? It's heavy. There's a lot of NAND, a lot of NAND chips in there. And I mean, compared to a hard drive, it weighs practically nothing. Like, look at that. This is 12 up to 20 terabytes. 15 terabytes. I mean, no wonder the data center loves SSD now. It's not cheap, but dense for sure. Okay, well, let's pop that puppy on there. Where'd the cable go? Oh, wow. It's like you went out of your way to get the most ass looking SATA cable. Thank you for that. Thanks for nothing. Boop. Let's go ahead and fire it up, ladies and gentlemen. There it is, there's our C drive, 446 gigabytes, ew. And then we got the big O drive. That's a lot of, that's a lot of terabytes. Freaking ridiculous, wait, hold on a second. 13.9 terabytes? What happened to my 15.3? What a rip off. I believe this is what's known as a uh, bra moment. Kids, can you uh, verify please? Is this a bra moment? Okay, it's not. Because Team Group uses standard gigabytes for their specifications, where one gigabyte is 1,000 megabytes, which is 1,000 kilobytes, etc. But Microsoft likes to think different, so to speak, and they use tebibytes and gibibytes instead. So what that means is that to Windows, one gigabyte is 1,024 megabytes, which is 1,024 kilobytes. Because of this discrepancy, Windows only sees the drive as being about 91% of its actual capacity. I wish that this problem would just go away, but for that to happen, we'd have to get all the software engineers to agree with all the hardware engineers, and they'd both have to agree with all the marketing people, which I think we all know is never gonna happen. This puppy's rated at 560 megabytes per second reads and up to 480 megabytes per second writes. Not real impressive by today's standards where you'll find drives that are like three, four, five, six gigabytes a second reads and writes. Of course, sequential reads and writes are not the be all and end all of drive performance anyway. Okay, so we won't be doing any sequential drive speed porn with this particular drive. I mean, it definitely meets the rated spec, 550 megabytes a second reads, but that's okay because we've actually got that coming with an early look at Kioxia's next gen U.3 enterprise drive. So get subscribed so you don't miss that one. This, this is more about, this is more of a capacity play. But why is it so slow? This is a brand new drive. Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, it uses the SATA interface, which is getting on in age and not being revised anymore for higher speeds because it's been mostly replaced by PCI Express. Number two is that it uses the AHCI protocol, which really was designed for magnetic drives, not for SSDs. That's why all those new PCI Express drives use NVMe instead. But it's got other problems. Even if it hooked up to a faster interface, it uses QLC NAND, which sacrifices some of its durability 
and its performance for the sake of cramming in more capacity. So this Sabrent QNVMe PCIe M.2 is another perfect example of a QLC product. It's an eight terabyte drive, but of course gives up some performance, particularly on writes. Still, it's impressive though, cramming 15 freaking terabytes of data into this tiny enclosure with no moving parts. And there's plenty of performance for a lot of the things you might want to do. So let's have a look at some of the stuff that our probation, ow, probation writer <coughs> copied onto the drive. Let's see if we can bring it to its knees. Hello? Did it uh, lock up again? Is this thing just like a piece of shit? Obviously for our viewers, a big one would be games. You guys might have noticed that uh, <clears throat> we only managed to fill up like one and a half terabytes of this thing. To put this in context, this drive can fit 61 copies of COD Warzone on it. And when it comes to loading times, let's use Grand Theft Auto V as our example. It's a game with notoriously long loading times. Fire up some story mode here and in the meantime, I'll give you some more context for how huge this thing is. 307 Ultra HD 4K Blu-ray movies, nearly 3.1 million songs, if we assume the average stream quality is an MP3 file that's roughly five megabytes. Not bad, right? Eh, not bad. Now, in the future, game loading time performance could be affected by technologies like direct storage. Oh my goodness, okay. Which... <laughs> In the future, you could run into bottlenecks with games that use direct storage, which is going to allow much, much faster level loading times, kind of like you see in the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series. But for now, with classically designed games, I wouldn't expect any appreciable performance difference between this and just about anything else. Man, this uh, poor Titan is really showing its age here. It smells. This is one of our old editing stations. It freezes if you move it around too much. Sit tight! I'll have <gasps> Enough of that though. Sorry, new writer. We don't have time to look at your memes and Smash Mouth collection. Somebody once told me that it's just not worth our audience's time. Uh, time to disassemble this thing. So uh, I think you just pop off those four screws and crack it open, right? Wait, how much does this thing cost? Should I be worried about breaking it? No, don't, don't tell me, don't spoil it. Is there a screw under here? Hold on. Hey, there it is. Oh, all right, that's a pretty normal looking drive. We got eight NAND flash chips here. We've got two DRAM chips mounted here. What's this, uh, have we Googled this part number yet? I wanna know how much RAM this freaking thing has because theoretically it should have like eight to 16 gigs of RAM. There's no way, there's like, there's no way they did that, but this is 2666 megahertz. DDR4, and I believe these are actually 16 gigabit dies. So that would mean that there's at least four gigs of RAM, and I've only looked at one side of the PCB. What are these Fizen chips here? Oh my God, my eyes are going. I need my reading glasses. Or, or, ha. Holy shit. This thing actually has eight gigs of RAM. There's two more T-Rats on the other side. This thing is freaking nuts. Are these power loss capacitors over here? Does this thing have power loss protection? Oh my God, I guess you'd need so many of them because in order to flush eight gigabytes of data, this thing would have to stay powered for a freaking long time. Holy crap balls. So every one of these NAND packages here is a gigabyte, okay? It's got eight gigabytes of RAM and is using a Fizon PS3112. So like, yeah, fine. That is some sweet engineering. To be clear, Team Group does not advertise any kind of power loss protection. I am, I am guessing that that's what these puppies are for. One thing to note, however, is that the bill of materials for this particular drive can apparently change from unit to unit because this is a non-standard SKU and is actually built to order. Not sure if that's a huge problem since this isn't the sort of thing that your average consumer can buy given that it cost, oh my God, we got to the part of the script where I find out how much it costs, $4,000. And making matters more challenging is the fact that you could actually buy two of these eight terabyte PCI Express drives and enough hoodies to wear a new one every day of the week from LTTstore.com 
for significantly less money than one of these. Not to mention that it would be way faster. I could see it being useful for maybe video editors or a high capacity storage server that uses two and a half inch bays. But funny thing is it's not super great for large amounts of sustained writes since it's write endurance is only 2,560 terabytes. Now that's still a lot. It's actually comparable to a four terabyte Samsung 860 Evo, but it's relatively low for a 16 terabyte, excuse me, 15.3 <clears throat> terabyte drive since you could only actually wipe and re fill this thing 167 times. That doesn't feel like a lot of times for $4,000. Maybe you just want long-term storage with higher reliability than a hard drive and you have money to burn? Okay, so it doesn't matter. The drive has its uses, but it's not an economy or budget option. And it also doesn't really make sense if you're an enthusiast since you'd be better served with a smaller, higher performance drive and then maybe some kind of magnetic storage with an SSD cache on it or something. But if you absolutely need 15 terabytes in a two and a half inch SATA enclosure, then I guess this is there for you. For you and only you. It's dang cool though, isn't it? So good job team group for making this weird thing because you could, even though you must have known almost nobody would actually buy it. Unless of course you guys want to prove me wrong because as usual, we're going to have affiliate links to where to buy it in the video description. What I am expecting to pop up is this message from our sponsor. Anytime we buy anything online, we give access to our personal information to merchants and their data partners. And this second point in particular often happens without our clear consent. So in order to keep your online presence safe and secure, use privacy.com. It's a free tool that makes it easy to manage your financial life online and allows you to keep the most important information secure. By generating virtual numbers, privacy masks your real banking information so you never have to worry about giving it out to people that you don't know online. Privacy can be used anywhere online that accepts credit cards, including lttstore.com, so you can buy your brand new CPU pillow knowing that your banking information is safe and secure. Privacy.com is PCI DSS compliant, uses military grade encryption to secure information, and offers two-factor authentication. And since they make their money from merchants, there is no cost to you. And in fact, if you sign up today, you'll get $5. That's right, five bucks. So check it out at privacy.com forward slash Linus. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy the video where we checked out the Nimbus Data 100 terabyte drive. That one, architecturally very different, but is designed for a very different use.